Hello and welcome to another video. Today we've got a HDA called Mesh Map. And the idea behind this is it will be an ambient occlusion, curvature, thickness, normals, and IED baker. It will write it out to a mask for your models or terrain for you to use then in scattering or remeshing or however you want to use them. Today I've got a simple demo scene to show you how it works. We're we'll running through all the parameters and then also I'll have a LOPS network set up a scene for you to show you kind of how I'd use it in more of a scene based scenario. So right, let's get started. So the first one here you can see is ambient occlusion. So you take it from this drop down menu and how ambient occlusion works is each point on the mesh will fire rays out in a cone angle after a certain length. And if it hits any parameter, any geometry, then it will return back a value. So there's a ray count and a max angle, which will increase the cone and then the length rays. You can increase the ray count and you'll get more of an accurate ambient occlusion, but it will take longer to compute. And then if you're not getting anything, you can increase cone angle it can also help with some of the parameters here. There's a post process which will normalize it. So let's say the max value is 0.6, normalizing will stretch that to one. So everything between zero and one. There's a blur amount which will blur your ambient occlusion as you can see here. And then a profile as well if you wanted to kind of crush this down into more of a mask. This is then wrote out as an export. So under this mesh as mask ambient occlusion, and then there's a visualizer as well. So you'll be able to see this. The next one, as we can see here is curvature. So if I drop this down, this will output a vector two. So it'll be two parameters if it's combined, but you can also single out convex and combined. Sorry, concave, here we go. Similar parameters set up to the other one. So if I turn off the lighting here, you'll be able to see. You can crush this down. You can increase this if you want. It will be writing out to a mask attribute and visualizing. The third one is the thickness. So once it's calculated, this will be similar to the ambient occlusion and how it works, where it will shoot out rays in an angle, but it will be interior. So it will be shooting out from the edge of the surface into the back and then returning a value, which is the thickness. This one works a little bit better when it's blurred a bit more, as you do get quite noisy in the, in the, without it. Next one is normals. So if I output, if I show you this, this is just outputting green at the moment, you can output RGB, but let's say we wanna make a top down mask. We can crush this right down, get something like this. So let's say that's the kind of mask you're after. Maybe you wanted a kind of sunlight to either scatter or to shade the top of your model. What we can do is we can reference a frame. So at the moment, this is referencing the current frame. So if I go to, let's say, piece in the animations here, this, you'll see that this ambient occlusion is getting referenced to everything. What you can do is, let's say you wanted a start frame, you can do something like this. That will compute the normals on the very start frame and then transfer them to the animation. We can also reference a second input. So at the moment here, I've got my basic animation model as you can see here, but I've also got a rest position. So maybe you might want to create some masks on the rest and then transform it to its animation. So we can also use the second input here, and then that will calculate the normals, or as you can see, the top of the hammer here, which is the top, this side here. Quite useful, especially for stuff that's moving to bake your mask down. The last one we have here is an ID mask. So at the moment, this is set to color. There's a seed value, which will change your thing. And there's also a modulus. And how this works is zero will mean that every single object will have a unique ID. If you bring this up, one means there'll just be a constant. Two means there'll be two, three, and so on. And this will group them like this. You can change this to mono, which will output you a nice mask, which is useful for kind of breakup, especially in, in environments. Right, so now I've gone through that, let's have a little look of how you might use this in more of a scene scenario if you are building an environment. So if I jump into this terrain that I've created, this is a simple preset terrain, and all I've really done is grabbed a cone, added some mountain noise, 
blended the base, bit of a twist, moved this around to match the camera of how I liked it, run it through a couple of height fields, and then remesh to the other side to reduce the polys a little bit. So now we have a kind of terrain like this. So now we, let's say you were given this as a model or maybe a scan or something, and you wanted to somehow create some maps from it. So what I'm doing here on the first one, this is just me calculating curvature. The next one here is an ambient occlusion with quite a wide spread on the angle and the ray length is quite large. This is just kind of getting grooves and creases and stuff like that. This one is a top down normals. So I've really crushed those normals. And this could be something like you wanted to have grass or you wanted to scatter, scatter a certain type of asset you could use in this. I've also got one more normal pass and this is at a very specific angle. And this is to capture kind of like steep rocks on the side. So I'm writing out all these parameters to the mesh and I'm going to be using these in shading later. So if I just jump out and just show you some of the assets we'll be scattering. Got a very simple rock. Got a clump of grass here. And I've also made this little alien raspberry plant. And this plant was just to show you how we would use some of the ambient occlusion ID and thickness. So if I jump in here, you can see that we started off by just scattering points to a kind of dome. And then running this through a vellum solver to expand it, almost like a balloon, just to get this kind of effect that I was after. I'm then running my mesh map on thickness and I'm using this to basically shift the saturation and value of them. So the bigger that they get or the thicker they get, the more color they have and the lighter they are. I've then got another one set to ID. I've turned this to visualize off. If I turn this back on, this is just to get some kind of breakup in the, in the hue. So if I move on to this one, you can see now I've shifted the hue using that ID mask to get some kind of different hues going in little groups. And then there's one last mesh map, which is ambient occlusion. And I'm going to be using this for the emission shading uh, later on, and I'll show you this in a sec, but this is the ambient occlusion one. So right, if we jump out of this, and if we jump into lots, I'll be able to show you the scene that I've set up. So if I jump into the camera view and perspective and change this to comma, we just let this render for a sec. So this is bringing in the terrain. It's bringing in all the maps that we've created using that mesh map. I've got a rock scatter, a grass scatter, and this raspberry plant. I've got a volume, which is just to give a bit of atmosphere towards the back of the scene. And then we've got some materials set up, which are kind of blending these together. So we could have a little dive in here. I can show you briefly some of the, some of the, some of the terrain. So this is bringing in the curvature and it's blending between colors. And it's bringing in the cliff, which is the normals mask that I brought inside here. And then we're outputting this as terrain. As you can see, especially with the raspberry setup, there's glowing cracks in between some of them in only specific areas. And this is using the ID mask as well. So I'm crushing the ID mask to only have that in certain areas. And then I'm using the ambient occlusion to emit from that. There's also some spilling cracks that are coming from the side onto the terrain and I'm using the curvature and a bit of a fall off from the scatter of these raspberries to create this kind of stuff. The lighting is just a distant light and then a HDRI. So let's kind of zoom into this for a little look. Yep. There you go. I like that render. So anyway, this is super useful. I use this all the time for doing kind of quick environment work. And it's always nice to have the curvature and ambient occlusion and everything and all in one place where you can just quickly drop down the node. You can remap the value, you can put a curve on it and it's all there. So the download link is in the description. So have a little play around of it. Let me know if you come across any bugs or anything. I'm going to hopefully try and increase the ambient occlusion calculation. So I kind of want to have a little bit of play around with it and how I can optimize it. It's fairly fast at the moment, but I'll be updating this HDA as I use it myself more. 
as always, any donations to the channel would be super helpful. If you can like and share this, this would be great to anyone that's find this interesting. And um, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.